Today's guest is Anne Bayford. Anne is a professional psychic medium who is working as a part-time consultant at the world-renowned College of Psychic Studies in London, as well as having her own personal clients. Anne has had three near-death experiences, which we are going to talk about today. You saw your body, but you really weren't sure it was your body. When did you realize perhaps that you're dead or you're outside of your body? Like you made the connection that, hey, that's me down there and I must be dead. Or did you ever make that connection? Yeah, yeah. And, and the word dead didn't come into my mind. It was like, well, I don't know. No, I don't. It, it was more that when my partner had touched my head, it was like energetically, I sort of, it, it was like a spark for my I, my soul that sort of, I felt him holding my head. It was sort of stroking my hair. I, I, I could feel that he was in shock. I sensed it that he was in so much shock. And then him touching my head, I was like, this is me. But I hadn't fully popped back into my body. It was like I knew I wasn't there, but I knew there was still a connection. So I wouldn't use the word dead. I just felt that I was somewhere else. And I that that was the moment where I was like, I knew I was somewhere else. I didn't know where I was. I wouldn't say panic sort of struck in but it was more like oh why am I here but yet I can see myself and it was more that I could see myself but where was I how could I be where I was what where was I but it was literally feeling his hand on my head that was like it really connected me to oh that is my body when you were looking through the book and seeing images did you feel like you well either at the time or now do you feel like you were having a life review Yes. And it's funny because it it was not just, this is so important, because it wasn't just about my life that I had just been living. I was in my 30s. It was also looking back at my past lives as well. Now, I didn't quite understand that to some degree. I knew there was some emotions attached to some stuff that I was unaware of in this lifetime. But it, they really revealed they revealed so much to me and I know now as a past life practitioner that when I work with clients I get it so much now and the work that I do as a medium is like I, I understand it so much now that we are just not here present in one life that you know a, a lot of souls or people as we are here your soul has been on a journey and so I was being shown stuff and I was also being shown future stuff as well, mm. which seemed really overwhelming at the time because I remember I was that sort of sense. They were showing me stuff that I've been doing within the last couple of years. And now I have those moments thinking, oh, my God, I know I was showed that before. And I know there's other work they want me to do as well, which they showed me then. But it was, yes, a life review, but not just of one lifetime. It was like where I'd been and the connections to that as well. Do you feel like you can't remember everything you were shown? And if that's true, do you think that's on purpose that you're not supposed to remember or well, I guess you're not yeah. in your head? Yeah, I am because you're right. Why because, is that? Right. Because literally <laughs> we're human having this experience, right? And our souls come into this lifetime to have this experience. Now, my belief in for everything has happened to me through each of the lifetimes that you go through that there, you know, I hate saying the word lessons because lessons is almost like being at school told off or told what to do. It's more about teachings. We're sort of in each of our lifetimes, we're sort of taught information and we learn that information. And I really there's times where I've sat over the last couple of years and I get a bit furious I'm like oh if only I could remember everything what they showed me and told me but now you know even recently last week I had like this massive download of information I was like oh my god I so understand it I so get it now you said that you were told stuff or shown your future and perhaps you forget it when you experience it is it deja vu for you Yes, yes, yes. Spot on. And that's exactly what happens. You know, I can go to places or see things or uh, I had a couple of weeks ago, there was a conversation I had with somebody and 
And it stopped me in my track. I was like, oh, my God, I've said this before. And I was on the train two weeks ago coming back from my son's house. I had that moment and I remember it hit me. I was like, oh, my God. And so I was on the train. I was looking at the window and the countryside and there was something in the countryside. There was this uh, abandoned rail track. And I remember looking at it and thinking, oh, my God, was that in one of my dreams I had? And then I sat there and I was like, no. I remember I was being shown that, but not to remember it. It was a bit like to remember it now, to, like a breadcrumb to say, yes, you're on the right track, Anne. Because I ha- I went to my son's just to get away from everything that's going on around me. I needed some time out. Now, my whole life situation's changing at the moment for me. And it made sense to see that. It was like a breadcrumb to say, Anne, you know, my soul is guiding me to my next path, my next journey. So it was, it sort of like was that deja vu moment to say, I know my deja vu moments are to say, right, Anne, you're on the right place, the right track, keep going along, follow those breadcrumbs that the universe is leaving you or part of myself in the future is leaving me. So yeah, totally deja vu. Yeah. Mm. So do you believe the future is played out for us then? Ah, Okay, yes, I have been thinking about this recently. My thought process since everything, all those things that happened to me is that there's a couple of possibilities that can happen in the future, a couple of possibilities to some degree. And I also feel that sometimes if we don't live our um, full potential as a being, if we live in fear and we stop ourselves from doing that adventure or, you know, doing that job or whatever, and we slow it all the way down, I don't feel that we always complete that mission in this lifetime, this purpose or whatever you wanted to do or whatever your soul said it was going to do when it came back. So I feel there's a couple of possibilities, even though sometimes I sit and I think, I, I think I'm living in a bit of a matrix, almost as if that. Like, what's the point? Because the computer program's already been programmed in. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. But when I tune into my guides and when I really tune into like listening to my my soul, I understand what I've been told and instructed. There are a couple of different possibilities, but it's where you are in yourself. If you feel that uh, the fear and do it anyway and, and be brave enough to step into your full potential, that is the possibility that that might happen to you. That might be your life. But even then that can go off like a like, yeah, train tracks, branches of a tree. There are a couple of possibilities. So I don't feel there's just one possibility or your future's plan out, what's the point? It's, I think there's a couple of different scenarios that can be there in front of you. It's up to you because it's free will. It's up to you in this lifetime where you are every minute of the day, you know, what you do. I mean, on that day of the accident, I could have crossed the road, gone straight across and post the letter, my head would have been severed, or I could have gone and got the train. But I actually listened to my intuition and, you know, could it just, that sort of guide me and working with your own intuition and not with the logical brain, it's sort of that gut feeling that will always lead you, lead you down that path of the likelihood that you're going in the right direction. Let me get one last question in. People may be watching this video who have recently had an NDE themselves and not knowing what to do. So you, I think you've kind of answered it, but if someone is in that situation, what would you recommend for them to do? Well, I'm happy if they want to I'll go onto my website, they can uh, message me there. If they wanted someone just to sit and to listen to them or to talk it through, because it can be a real mess with your mind. You've been however old you are you, you've been brought up with how you should see things in life and then when this happens it's almost like a pack of cards that get thrown up in the air and you look at life in a different way so you know try and talk to people that are quite open to this um there are going to people that are going to judge you or you know whatever however they might whatever they might say but just know your experience is valid very valid write it down that really helps that process as well but i'm open for people if they want to contact me or find people that will listen to them and reach out to those other people who have been through that experience because it does it really messes with your mind for a while mm. yeah great thank you for sharing that it's funny because it just made me think i saw a guy on youtube a few days ago that he posted himself he's in the hospital and decided to make a video and said yeah it just happened to me and i'm back and i saw so and so i mean he may be still in the hospital 
And I've been yeah. trying to get him on the podcast. It's been difficult, but I think that would be amazing to have somebody in the hospital. He just had it two days ago, that fresh, and we would be talking about his NDE. Wow, that is amazing. But I think now that we've moved on from like the 19 years it happened to me, now moving forward, I think, yeah, mo most people are quite open about it now. They're sort of, you say it's not unusual to hear it or scary to hear it. People are interested to hear it. So, yeah, I think that's amazing. Wow, love that. Yeah. All right, Anne. Well, thank you so much for being on my podcast. I really appreciate you and I wish you the best. Thank you so much. It's been lovely meeting you. Thank mm -hmm. you.